Bishop Robert Gruss is the shepherd of the Diocese of Saginaw in Michigan, and he has graciously shared a beautiful Stations of the Cross with us here at the Catholic TV Network, focusing on the struggle that we face these days with the COVID-19 pandemic. Bishop Gruss, thank you so much for being with us today. We appreciate your time. You're welcome. It's good to be with you. Thank you. Yeah. So you've you've only been uh, the shepherd of Saginaw because you were in Rapid City for was it eight years? I was in Rapid City eight years, and then I came here. Um, I was installed here as the seventh bishop um, the end of July um, last year. So eight months. I've been here eight months now. I bet it's been a crazy eight months. It's been nonstop. So, but I like it that way. You know, I, I, I it's been great. The people are wonderful and. Uh, I've been well received, and I, I've had a lot of uh, a lot of fun since I've been here. Well, you know, Maria Bain, who works for us here on staff at Cafe TV, I know is a a friend and admirer of yours. So uh, we're thrilled to have this chance to talk to you, and and specifically about the stations. Could you just tell us first of all about the diocese of Saginaw? What what is the diocese like? Because you know we're out here on the East Coast, and we have people watching on the West Coast, and uh, just let us know what the what the church is like there in Saginaw. Well, geographically, we're about two hours north of Detroit, yep. and so we're in the, we're in the Thumb area. Um, so it's it's it's, it's mid eastern Michigan. So okay. a lot of my diocese is like on Lake Huron. It's not a large diocese; only about seven thousand square miles, eleven counties, um, about a hundred thousand Catholics. But it's mostly rural. It's um, there's three larger cities: would be Saginaw Bay City, Midland, that whole area, kind of a triangle area, and then the rest is all farmland. It's all rural. A lot of farmers, so it's great. I'm yeah. a kind of a rural guy myself, so it's um, I fit right in. You grew up in Arkansas, did you not? Well, I was born there, then lived there the first five days of my life. Ah, okay. And then I migrated to Oklahoma, Missouri, Wisconsin, 16 years in Wisconsin, and then I moved to Iowa when I was 25. So um, I spent 30 years in Iowa before going to uh, western South Dakota. But I'm a priest from the Diocese of Davenport in Iowa. I see. Well, they're lucky to have you, and you're lucky to have a, a great diocese. And we're grateful for the Stations of the Cross that you've recently recorded, um, focusing on the pandemic that we face. Can you tell us how these Stations of the Cross all came about? Well, certainly when, you know, this whole, you know, this really this terrible situation has developed all across the globe, but in particular in our country, and has started to spread more and more, um, um, Mary Beth um, Hobbs, who is... Uh, She's the mother of my youngest priest. He was just ordained uh, last May. Um, she's very involved, very active um, in her parish, and she was also the chaplain of one of our, our Catholic schools in, in Bay City. But she's a very spiritual woman, and she um, took it upon herself to begin to reflect and pray with the Lord, and the Lord led her to write these Stations of the Cross with the, with the, with the focus on, on this, uh, this, this COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And so... Um, her pastor sent them to me, and then we wanted to provide some type of um, um, some spiritual things for our people since we're all closed down here, and um, and we were had intentions of really of, of of recording the stations of the cross, and so when these came to me, I thought, why don't we pray these because they're so um, pertinent to this time, and um, I think they will bring a, people a lot of. Uh, um, solace and comfort as they, as they listen to them and watch them. I'm sure they will. And uh, once again, you'll be able to watch the Stations of the Cross from uh, the Diocese of Saginaw uh, coming up today at 12 noon Eastern time, uh, just prior to our going to the Vatican for the prayer service and blessing Irby at Orby with Pope Francis. Uh, we're grateful to also Mary Beth then for uh, composing these stations. And isn't there something, a great story behind the stained glass windows in the cathedral? Well, back in the 60s, I think it was in the 60s, they had removed them from the cathedral for a renovation of some sort, and um, they ended up replacing them, and they ended up, from what I understand, in a garage somewhere. And um, they were uh, a woman who was storing them in her, in her garage, at least the story that I, that I think I'm recalling correctly. She was going to have a garage sale, and these were part of that, and so she called the pastor, I think, or... or um, and so he came and got them. And in the end, um, when Bishop Carlson was here, he called the, the office of liturgy and said, Do we have these stations go over and look at them. And then they ended up bringing them back. And so when Bishop Stone was here and he renovated the cathedral here in Saginaw, um, they brought those out of storage. They looked at them and thought these need to go back into the church. And so they had them completely restored 
um, framed. And then now those are the stations that you'll see um, um, on the recording of the stations of the cross. They're very beautiful. So, and uh, so I'm just happy and thrilled to have them back. Yeah, great. We'll be seeing those. And um, so the stations have aired uh, on commercial networks there in your diocese. What's the reaction been? The reaction has been extremely positive. First of all, we were surprised that the station came to us and wanted to to, to allow these to be shown in prime time, no less, uh, 7.30 p.m. on Saturday night. And But the response has been unbelievable from Catholics and non-Catholics alike. People find in these some some peace and consolation um, as they, you know, they're 30 minutes long. And so um, they, they really have found peace and consolation as they've watched them. And so they're calling, up, you know, our communications people, they've been calling the station and, and really expressing their appreciation, you know, for one, how well they're done, but how much, how much, the, the, how much meaning they have brought to their lives. So it's great. And they're going to be played again this Saturday on network TV again. So we're grateful because I think it is a time where people are looking for, you know, they're, they're looking for that spiritual part that can help them get through this uh, pandemic. And these are just, hopefully this is one little part that we can do to help people to do that. Just a quick, we only got about 30 seconds left, but just a quick update. I remember you introducing the canonization process for Nicholas Black Elf, the medicine man, the Lakota medicine man. Can you give us an update on that process? So the the, the diocesan phase ended um, last uh, last June. We, we presented all the material. Um, we sent it over to the Congregation for the Cause of Saints, and that's where it sits now. So now we just kind of wait. But he is a servant of God. We're hoping that sometime soon, who knows how long it'll take, that at least he'll become a venerable. Is the process, and we keep praying for a miracle. A Native American, a Native, a Native. American uh, canonized. That would be something to pray for. Well, uh, Bishop be Bishop Gross, thank you so much for uh, both your time today and also for sharing these Stations of the Cross just to help people through uh, these challenging days. And may God bless your continued ministry there in the Diocese of Saginaw. Thank you, and bless your ministry too with uh, Catholic TV. Appreciate that. We'll see you soon. Okay.